Good morning. You listen to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kim Parr. This morning, my guest is Santo Tercivia with Market Insights. Santo, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you, Kim? I'm good. Having a good summer so far? Oh, yeah, we're having a great summer. We just got back from vacation, and it's always a good time. You went to Europe, didn't you? Yeah, we went to, to see some of the old ruins, and it was it was really great. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought I'd check in with you as people are in the early stages of planning for next year, g- getting back to off the vacation mode. We just saw some results. Home centers, both Lowe's and Home Depot, have reported now. There's some Wall Street Journal articles about it I think are kind of interesting. You know, Lowe's is up about 5.3%. Home Depot is in the U.S. with same stores. They're up 5.4%, so they're kind of neck and neck there. And one of the things that a Wall Street Journal article is talking about says that the home center's sales, the size of each transaction is going up. There's a quote in here that says that transactions over $900 rose 8.1%. So what do you think is going on as it relates to floor covering in the home centers? I think they're mining their franchise with the... DIY consumer, Mm -hmm. uh, which they've had for some time. They have a good reputation with their core group, and that's growing, I think, and that's where some of their strength is on the floor covering side. Obviously, that's where their strength is always on the floor covering side. Whereas the floor covering stores have the benefit right now of the builder market growing and the tenant improvement market gaining. Those are markets that the home centers really can't reach. And so I think the net net of it all is that they're probably rising at the same rate of growth. I was looking at more of this Wall Street article. It says that uh, Home Depot's sales had a little stronger growth with their professional shopper. Those little subcontractors that are going in and buying, Mm -hmm. uh, that business seems to be doing pretty well. Yeah, we used to call that, when I was at Mannington, we used to call that the gray market, Yeah, where installers who work for a, a store do some work on the side. It's a good market for people who either want a second job or want a job under the radar. <laughs> they basically live off of you know personal referrals. The home centers become their warehouse. They become their distributors. And the financing comes through a Visa card. So it's pretty simple. You take somewhat of a, uh, a chance as a consumer uh, with, that, with that kind of a market, but it does exist. It will continue to exist. Mm-hmm. So what you're telling me in summary is that the home centers, they've got the DIY consumer and the longer established independent retailers. They've got the builder and the tenant improvement business. So kind of keeping each other in check and and you feel year-over-year year flooring sales are about on pace as what they did last year, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, we feel it's, it's, it's close to flat. You know, we just did some consumer research, and we're going to put it in our October issue. One thing that we found out that was interesting, we all know that the Internet has become more and more important as a consumer decides to shop for floor covering. But we also discovered talking to a handful of consumers who'd recently bought flooring that many of them go in the home center just to kind of ground themselves in the early stages of the shopping process and a few end up buying there but also several end up going somewhere else and buying so I found it was interesting that they use that as their research area. Absolutely and the strength of the home centers I know when the last time we did uh, the research on this I'm sure you remember Kim Mm -hmm. The strength of the home centers were price, reputation. Those were two key areas that they they showed strong in. Whereas the floor covering stores, it was on installation and it was on salesman's knowledge. The installation satisfaction at the floor covering stores are still outstripping that of the home centers. So the installation market is one that the home centers have been hard to crack. And they've done a lot of things. And you can see, you know, they've their frustration when they're doing stuff like $39 installations and things like whole house installations and all that. They're struggling to get that business and keep that business. So, And they have to be careful because if they lose a customer or they lose a revenue stream because they're losing someone who comes in there for everything, for mm-hmm. light bulbs, for appliances, for a whole bunch of things potentially, and they can't afford to tick off a, a customer because they're going to lose a significant revenue stream there. Mm-hmm. You mentioned appliances because in this Wall Street Journal article, they're talking about where that's one of the fastest growing sectors within these home centers. They're selling more and more appliances. 
Yeah, that whole industry is in upheaval right now, as much from the home center's challenge in that market as it is from anything. But uh, the distribution channels are struggling right now to sort themselves out. Mm-hmm. And consumer beware, you know, the appliance that you buy at the home center may not be exactly the same quality as the appliance that you might buy at an independent appliance store. That's correct. Santos, we, as we step away from talking about the home centers and just look at the overall flooring business, what is the effect of the strong dollar having on where the product is coming from? Well, imports are growing slightly, but it's on a category-by-category category basis. Mainly ceramic and resilient are the sectors that are seeing growth and area rugs. But all the other categories pretty much are flatter down. Mm-hmm. We're still seeing rugs places like India and China and Turkey continuing to bring in product. But um, China continues to be a force in wood flooring and especially in resilient tile and LVT. The Chinese so far don't seem to be struggling with the domestic factories that are developing here in the United States, not yet anyway. Okay. All right, Santo. Well, thanks for g- catching us up on what's going on in the business. Again, we're talking to Santo Trasivia with Market Insights, and you've been listening to Kempar and Flordelli.net.